hello everyone and uh, yeah I, I mean I, I don't think I have the answers I have a lot of questions and uh, and I think the points that uh, that I've listed are, are the this the you know the pain points for all of us and by nature I'm a, I'm a very positive person I'd like to see the bright side of things but uh, it's it's in this environment and in the current pandemic I think we're all feeling the pain and we all uh, have taken a bit of a knock this year um, because all of us were hoping for a, a good and positive start to, to 2021 and recovery, you know, really good, strong signs of recovery this year. Um, so this second wave has really, um, has, has really um, you know, caught us a bit of LBW. Um, and there's not much you can do about it. I think I, I very much look forward to hear what Alex has to say, where he sees it going. But I think for all of us, the question is, how long still, how long do we have to Hold on, you know, what can we do in the meantime? And, and that's the question that's very difficult to answer. We, we currently in a second wave, people are talking about a third wave. There's the ongoing question of vaccines. Vaccines are being rolled out in, the, in our source markets, which is great in many countries. Um, hopefully they work against all these variants as well, the Brazilian variant, the South, they call it the South African or Brazilian or UK variant. I personally really don't like those, those names of calling them by destination um, because it's so bad for the messaging. And in, in reality, these, this virus can, you know, can mutate anywhere. So it, the, 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 the origin of the variant really makes no, makes no difference. But be that as it may, the questions remain about whether the vaccine will cover all of those variants and whether it will be effective or not. Hopefully it will be. Hopefully once South Africa starts rolling out vaccines um, and possibly find some other treatments as well. I know there's been a lot of talk about ivermectin in social media. I'm not going to tell you all my thoughts and comments about that right now. But, uh, you know, I think the hope has been that we will see recovery and we now know that we're not going to see recovery for the, in the short term, so certainly not the first quarter or the first half of this year. Um, so I think that, that to me drives all of the other questions or many of the other current questions um, that we face, you know, especially in uh, us as, as coastal provinces, we were deeply impacted by the beach ban. And I think there was a lot of, um, you know, a lot of unhappiness about that, a lot of anger about that. There, there are obviously some localized areas where we all know what those beaches look like on, uh, on, on Boxing Day, on, on our New Year's Day. And when you look at those pictures, it might make sense. Yes, let's close that. Let's make sure there's no big spreader, you know, super spreader events. But the overall ban for the whole region, basically the whole country, except for the Northern Cape, um, it, it was just, you know, fr from our perspective as operators and as, as tourism business owners, it wasn't grounded in science and, uh, and, and it leaves you feeling powerless. What can you do? Who can you speak to? How can we lobby government to, to, to lift that ban? But by now, the damage has been done because uh, the, the holiday season has come and gone. Um, and it has caused massive, um, massive cancellations and losses for many people that were depending on a good December season. So. Uh, I don't have an answer to that. I'm just put, putting it out there as a as a as a common shared sort of source of pain for all of us. Um, and on the on the point of lobbying, I really want to say up front that you know I'm not um, I'm a SATSA member, just a regular member. I'm not on the board or involved with the SATSA leadership. But I I really just want to also thank you, David, and the team at SATSA Hanley for the work that you guys have been doing. Um, I know I don't think Chief is on this call, but uh, you know from the TBCSA side, the lobbying that has been happening behind the scenes on behalf of this industry is something we have not seen the scale of lobbying um, in, in, in years past. And that is fantastic. It's wonderful to see. I've, see, I've, been, I've been very encouraged to see a stronger united voice, uh, the whole industry coming together um, to talk about the messaging, to talk about how can we lobby government to make sure that our borders are open and we've seen some successes. I think the fact that borders were opened in October and then finally all to all countries in, uh, on the 11th of November um, and have not been closed again, we were all fearful of that, uh, now in January, um, that, that, those are positive things. Of course, our source markets have, have closed borders. Um, Holland has banned flights, the UK has banned flights, the US more recently has banned flights from South Africa. Um, and, and I think that uh, we're well aware of that. I'm sure we will hear uh, either Alex or you, David, speaking a bit more about the, the whole issue of the messaging around the, the variant, the South African variant, which is doing immense damage to the, 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 you know, the brand 
of destination in South Africa. So that, that's something that I think is on all of our minds and we'd like to know what can we do as, as ordinary members? How can we help that? How can we help that process? How can we strengthen that, the messaging around that and make sure that, uh, that it doesn't become uh, just another nail in the coffin of, of brand South Africa? Um, so, you know, I, th I think that, that that's sort of the, the current um, the current issues. We, we continue to want to lobby for open borders. We want to we want to lobby or we, we're hoping to lobby for a scientific approach. Um, I think we've we've had serious questions about the alcohol ban, about the beach bans and whether or not they are um, they are grounded in science. And I think that, you know, lots of us here would agree that uh, perhaps they're not grounded in science. There are maybe other reasons for it. There's no doubt that uh, that alcohol um, adds to you know uh, trauma um, hospitalizations. So in that sense, perhaps it was necessary. Um, but with case numbers coming down and hospitalizations coming down, we want to see those bans lifted ASAP before before they do further damage. So um, yeah, and then I think you know there's there's some questions that I'm fielding. Uh, people have been asking: Is there a case for legal action? Does anyone know of a possible class action? And we just chatted about it briefly beforehand. It's very difficult to know whether one can do that, whether the courts have the appetite for it. Um, but possibly someone can touch on that to see if there is is there anything happening that people need to be aware of, um, or is that up to each member to decide for themselves if they're going to take on this government. Um, for, for, for the losses faced. Um, on the legacy issues, there's a number of issues that I think uh, have, have been with us for a number of years and they continue to, to hamper us. Um, probably chief among those for, for us as, as wheels operators would be the NPTR. Um, that continues to be a disaster, the, the lack of capacity. They haven't had a board for a, for a long time. I think they recently reconvened in about August or September last year. But they haven't done much since. I, I'm still waiting for six applications for more than 18 months. I think many other operators, hundreds of other operators, have been waiting for months, if not years, for the operating licenses. So that's an ongoing issue. Um, and we need to continue trying to find a way to put pressure on the on the trans Department of Transport, Minister of Transport, to address that issue and possibly find a completely new way of, 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 um, of handling operating licenses. Uh, the e-visas is uh, is a, an ongoing topic. I think that is also something that it's, it's on the agenda. It's just a very slow moving thing. I would really like to, and I'm sure the whole industry would really like to have all these issues dealt with and sorted during this time that we are struggling with the, with the pandemic, and with the virus, so that when we open up and when travel recovers and when the vaccines are rolled out and people start traveling again, that we don't have any other obstacles to travel. Um, and, and so hopefully by then, you know, air access can improve, e-visas can be uh, rolled out, the NPTR can have solved its issues, and so on. And then on a practical side or a, maybe a financial side, the, uh, the big challenge for everybody, obviously, is surviving the pandemic while travel is dead. Um, there's been ongoing talk about whether or not tours may be um, reinstated for tourism and affected industries. The last words I heard, and I don't know if anyone has, has more up-to-date information, is that basically it's a no from government. They don't have the money. And so I don't think anyone's expecting tourists to come back online and to help us out to keep our staff. So it really is, I was saying to, to, to Natalia earlier, it's, it's a tightrope for business owners between helping your staff and not letting them go, you know, supporting them, and making sure that your business survives. And uh, so, so if, if, if businesses are surviving on um, a certain amount of cash reserves that hopefully or possibly they've built up, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very difficult calculation to know when do I let people go? When do I lower salaries? Um, you know, when do I sell my assets? When do I sell vehicles? And uh, unfortunately, we've seen a lot of people already go out, out of business. Some people just voluntarily closing down temporarily or going into other industries or starting up something different. Um, people have to take, you know, drastic steps to try and survive. And um, uh, I think that's something we all can relate to. Um, one of the challenges is that some of the relief and, and, and funding uh, or, or um, uh, yeah, the relief measures that have been um, at play during last year, things like payment holidays from the banks, for example, or interest-free loans, 
those things all seem to have dried up. I don't know how many of you have, have received um, much help from that. I know from my employees, for example, they are really struggling. If they, they, they you can't, uh, you know, expect a payment holiday from the bank for a year. So if, if they got a holiday for April, May, June, to have a bit of relief in terms of paying their bond or their car or whatever, um, that they had to start paying again. And uh, to go back to the bank now, they're not getting much relief or help from the bank with um, with their loans, with their bonds, with their car payments. So I think for the guy on the ground, for the for the for the little guys and for the employees that are really facing um, you know the the crunch, it's very difficult. And they have they ask, they're asking as well, where when is this going to stop? How long do I need to hold on for? You know, when when can we expect uh, tourism to start recovering? So I think that's an ongoing uh, issue for all of us, an ongoing question. Um, I don't know if there's any any other uh, options there in terms of lobbying that we can do as industry to um, to to have some access to some form of relief that can tide us over for possibly the next six months or so. Um, but that's an ongoing question. Uh, then insurance has been on 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 a lot of people's lips. Um, the whole saga with uh, business interruption insurance. I'm not going to go into that. I know that's an ongoing thing and uh, the, you know, interesting developments there. Um, and then we had the recent webinar about liability insurance, which of course we all know, um, currently COVID is no longer covered under anyone's policy for liability insurance. So um, that that is a uh, it's a big risk for us because COVID is the biggest risk that our, we as operators face, and uh, you know, large owners and so on. So it's a very real risk out there in the marketplace, and uh, and we're not covered. So if somebody does get COVID, um, dies from it possibly, and and they want to um, claim against the company or against the hotel or the guest house or whatever, and say maybe that you know we got it uh, in South Africa or we got it while we we're on tour with you and alleged negligence, um, we are on our own to fight those battles. We don't have a, uh, an insurance company behind us to fight those battles. Um, the same with people who test positive or show symptoms and have their trip cut short to have to go into isolation and lose money because of it, maybe want refunds or threaten with poor reviews because they're not happy about it, having the tour canceled. Uh, those type of issues we've all discussed. I'm not going to go back into that now, but we've all discussed that in the webinar. Um, so that's an ongoing challenge for all of us. And then, uh, yeah, I guess the last the last point that um, I've been watching with in, with interest is just the 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 united voice that is that has been rising up from the from the industry, and it's really something I I uh, I feel positive about, and I, I want to encourage that that we instead of having a lot of different fragmented voices and small little associations and 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 so on, that we really pull together and work together and uh, make sure that um, bodies like SATSA and uh, uh, the National Federation of Tour Guides that, you know, that, that they work together in terms of um, pulling together our resources, pulling together our, our, our voice and our opinions, our lobbying efforts, and, um, and, and put out a united voice that can help to ensure that the messaging we put out there to our source markets, uh, as well as to government and other stakeholders, is a united one.